Hello everyone, welcome to episode number nine of An Italian Knitting Podcast. This is Francesca, I am an Italian knitter and I welcome you here. This is my office room in my house. I try to put some plants in the kind of strategic spots so it doesn't look as kind of white and empty. I don't know if that's doing the trick, but I hope so. Um, hope you are doing very well as always and maybe you have a drink with you and you have your knitting. I'm cheating today and I'm wearing a non-handmade knitted cardigan thing, but I needed something on top of one of the objects that I'm going to show you today and I didn't have a cotton or like at least like a spring summer appropriate cardigan. So this is what I have for you right now. I am going to start today with the usual finished objects and then we'll go through works in progress and acquisitions because this time I think I have a good amount of new yarn to show you. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. <laughs> There's quite a lot of that. We'll see. You can always keep the acquisition part. I feel like many podcasters um, say that in their videos that um, they don't want to kind of enable people to buy more but I feel like I always find some good inspiration looking at other people's acquisitions so I will include my newly bought yarn in this episode and then you feel free to skip it if you would like. So first finished object is what I'm wearing. This is the Cumulus top. I feel like I want to say cumulus camisole because for me this style of garment is a camisole and so all the patterns should be called camisole but I'm joking but this is cumulus top by Petit Knit and I recently blocked it so um, I feel like you can see that the fabric is quite even which I, I really like. And I don't know if you remember, but this yarn is the one I talked about in my last episode, complaining about the fact that I bought some crochet appropriate yarn and I wanted to knit with it. Um, so this is what I was able to make with it. I don't think it was a super pleasant experience because the yarn is kind of ropey, like it feels like a thread, like a dental floss thread. So, I mean, it was okay. I think the final result is quite pretty um, and lightweight and I like the color. The knitting experience was okay. I opted to make very, very short straps. I feel like the pattern instructs you to make longer ones so that these triangles kind of sit a bit lower in the front like this. But I feel like since I'm very small chested, that I, I prefer, I don't know, this look compared to more of like a scandalous neckline. So this is what I went with. And I made the decision of using the entire quantity of yarn that I had until I had nothing left anymore. And I think the length is perfect. Maybe it's slightly more like cropped than what I would normally go for. Is that true? I don't know. So this is my belly button. Um, I don't know. Maybe I usually go up until like another uh, little kind of bit there at the end, but I feel like this is perfect and I will wear it, I think, with skirts. I have a few skirts that are quite long and flowy, which are patterned. So they have like, I don't know, polka dots and things like that. And I don't think they look very good with kind of busy fabrics. Um, like with patterns or like complicated kind of visuals and so I think this would be perfect for the skirts but I think it also goes well with jeans like the color is good the hem is actually one of my favorite things which is so random to say the hem is called like a folded hem It looks very professional. So what you do is you knit in the round and then you bind off 
and then you fold the fabric inward and then you stitch down on the inside of the garment and so if you kind of flip it you are able to see that um, there is this kind of a situation here but on the outside you I don't know you it looks like a regular t-shirt hem I feel like so I'm pretty proud I don't think I have much else to say about this camisole. The construction is very straightforward. So what you do is you knit four triangles and then you connect them all in the round. And then you knit in the round until you run out of yarn or until the length looks good on you. And you're also asked to do a I-cord edging here, which I think looks stunning. And that's it. So if you actually wanted to of play with garment construction i feel like you could just knit this without a pattern just because it's quite like simple um if you knew like how to determine how many stitches you need i'm very lazy i'm not a designer and i do like to follow patterns so i would not have gone for this route but i feel like even the simple construction this is something that some people might be able to just go with it something that i actually mentioned in my last episode was that i didn't like this pattern in the kind of official pattern pictures and it wasn't on my like i absolutely need to knit this garment um it just happened because i had the weird yarn and this was the simplest camisole um but yeah it wasn't on my like oh i really like this i really want to knit this because i didn't like kind of the bulging here at the top that I saw on the kind of official pictures and I feel like I also don't love it on me. I feel like it, it's okay. Um, I don't know, I, maybe, maybe my body is not meant to be covered by like super geometric looking triangles, which I think it makes sense. The body is more like round and has like a, not, not a geometrical shape. So triangles are just easy to knit. And so this is an easy way to go about building a camisole but yeah maybe the shape should be a little bit different here to accommodate for kind of a chest area i would still recommend this as an easy pattern it takes no brain power really if you have a very thin yarn that you don't know what to do with maybe like mine it's very fiddly and you don't want to risk a very complicated patterns i think this is a good option little bite I have another couple of finished objects that are not garments, which is surprising, I think, for this podcast. Um, but the first one is an accessory, and that's a market bag. There we go. Um, this is a knitted market bag. I've seen these as crochet patterns quite a lot and i'm not a crocheter i bought my first crochet hook ever like two weeks ago so definitely not a crocheter and i do not intend to learn how to properly crochet within the kind of near future that doesn't interest me in this point in my life so i wanted to go for a knitted market bag and i think this is very pretty i really like the shape the pattern is from Paula Strict or Suzanne Muller and the yarn that this is knitted with is the yarn that I frogged from my Thea top that I showed you last time. I had all the intentions to go ahead and frog it right after I showed it to you and that's what I've done. I think as soon as I turned off the camera or just turned off my phone <laughs> because I'm filming on a phone. Um, I went ahead and frogged everything. Um, the yarn is called Rowan Denim Revive. This is vast majority of cotton, but some like other fibers in there. And I think it has denim. <laughs> Actually, I don't think, I, I assume because the name of the yarn is Denim Revive. And so this is supposed to be kind of recycled jeans in there too, which I find pretty fun. I've not been using this as a market bag in the sense that I've not been putting fruits, oranges and lemons inside here. Uh, I think my straps are not like strong enough to 
be able <laughs> for me to fill this up with fruit, heavy fruit, and still kind of look good and not break apart. Um, and I actually don't need a bag like that. I have lots of bags that are suitable and they're sturdy and strong that I can go grocery shopping with. And the intention that I had for this market bag was just for knitting stuff. So I've mostly been putting projects in there while I knit on them. So I'll show you what I mean. So for example, this would be like a garment that I'm knitting on. And so I would have, I don't know, the ball of yarn and then I would kind of bring this on my shoulder here. And if I'm going to my mom's house, I can just go like this. And then when it's time for me to knit on this, I'll keep my bag here and then pull out the project, knit on this, and you can still have kind of the ball of yarn in the bag and the strand of yarn coming out of it. And it's very easy because you have this kind of um, edge here and the yarn can come out from here. I really like this and I feel like if you are someone who likes to walk and knit at the same time, I think this would be lovely to do that with. Let's do a little demonstration. Perfect. <laughs> this is actually a very bad example because this is not attached to a ball at the moment. <laughs> so I'm just pretending, but yeah, I've tried that. Uh, I didn't actually walk and knit, but I stood up and knit. So I was knitting while standing up and this was perfect. Um, so yeah, I recommend this. Pattern was pretty straightforward. It's knitted flat actually. And then you do a little edge all around here that makes it into this shape. The straps are pretty flexible but sturdy enough for you to carry something that has some weight to it. I again don't think you can fill it up with like 10 oranges and be fine with it, so I'm not sure, but this is kind of the, the weight that I usually would put in and it's perfectly fine. I actually did an interesting bind off here on the straps and I used the Icelandic bind off um, because I wanted to match the cast on that it's used for the straps. I wanted a bind off that would also offer some stretch and if I bind off in pattern which is just like knit and bind off my straps would have been very very tight so I used an Icelandic bind off. Um, and I feel like it's perfect. So I don't think you would be able to see which side is the cast on and which side is the bind off. So I think mission accomplished. And the Icelandic bind off, I think looks very good, almost like a tubular bind off, but you don't need a sewing needle to do that. You just do it with your regular knitting needles and it's still very stretchy and nice and provides elasticity, so definitely recommend it. I'll link videos in the description below if you are looking to learn how that's worked. What else do I want to tell you about this bag? Nothing much? Ooh, I actually plan to bring this to a knitting retreat that I'm going to very, very soon. I'm so excited about it. It'll be like an overnight the retreat so we're there for two nights and that will be in the mountains here in Italy very very exciting and it's organized by Julia from Well Done I will link her down below in case you are in like in Italy or like surrounding area and you want to come to one of these retreats I think she organizes them throughout the kind of spring and autumn season as well so you'll find a few different meetups like this over the year if you want to join but yeah so anyway why i mentioned that is because we have planned a walk or i guess like a hike and knit at the same time and so i think i might try to do this and knit while i 
have the bag on me with the yarn inside. I'm not very good at walking and knitting at the same time, but I think it's fun if you are in a group and everyone is trying to do that. It looks pretty cool. That's it. After I knitted the bag with the leftover yarn that I frogged, I had some extra left and I've always wanted to have some knitted coasters for my desk or that I can use to put my mug or my glass on top of and be reminded that, that knitting is nice and even if you're doing your taxes or working or whatever you're doing at your computer um, you kind of look at your coaster and you're reminded that when you have a break you can knit on something or I don't know something cheesy like that anyway so I knitted myself some coasters I was able to knit six with the leftover yarn that I had and I used every single last scrap let me show you the best one. Is there a better one? I didn't pay a lot of attention while blocking them. I didn't pin the four edges down so the sides are not super straight because I don't care too much. But you could do that, I think. If you wanted to give these ones, you might put a little bit more care into making them look like squares. Mine are not like, see here, it's not straight. I was too lazy. So this is the coaster, it has a little bit of a garter border and I did stock in it in the middle so that when you place your mug it, it's perfectly inside the square and looks lovely. And I feel like this would be perfect if I had like a knitting and tea party in my house and I had like friends coming over and I would put them on the table and they, these friends would have tea and would knit on their projects, um, yeah, <laughs> dreams. Um, I actually have in real life knitting friends, but we don't have lots of time to get together at someone's house and do this sort of stuff, but maybe summer and autumn will give us the chance to do that. I followed a free pattern that I found on YouTube and I think the pattern is actually made with kitchen string, um, but it's perfect for any yarn that you have. And I think it's especially perfect for cotton because you can easily wash this if you have a, like a tea stain or coffee stain in here, you can just wash it and without paying a lot of attention and it dries really fast. I don't know, I like it. How do we demonstrate this? Boom. Perfect. <laughs> this was my last finished object. I guess technically these are six finished objects. <laughs> uh. Moving on to works in progress. I have three and one I kind of showed, sneakily showed while it was making you look at this bag. Um, so this is another Cumulus Tea by Petit Knit. I've knit one already and this is my second one that it's in progress. The yarn is lovely and that's Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and this is the color Rose Plum. No, this is the color Plum Rose. I actually have two skeins left. And I use it too, so I'm more or less halfway done with the shirt. And this is the easiest shirt that you could find, probably. I don't know if that's true. No, I'm joking because I still need to do like eye cord edges, which are like not very fun and easy, honestly, for me because they involve like picking up stitches. But uh, this part, for example, right after the V neck point to where my needles are. It was so easy. You just sit there and you knit in the round. I did the majority while being at my parents' house yesterday with family, just chatting away, but also being able to use my hands and not fiddle with like my phone or other stuff. So my hands were kind of focused on working on this. I didn't have to look because I'm able to do stocking it in the round without looking. So I was able to kind of pay attention 
to others and my daughter and my mom and my husband and everyone who was there. I actually prepared this cast on with the intention of bringing it to the knitting retreat so that I could have something pretty mindless. Um, however, I might actually be done with this by the time that the retreat starts. So I might have to cast another one on before then, which I don't mind. Uh, I really enjoy casting on this project and knitting on it. And the yarn is very soft, very drapey. The other Cumulus tea that I knitted was in Knitting for Olive, but it was in their cotton merino and it was a little bit warm for the summer. While I feel like pure silk might be appropriate for a full summer, maybe not like 2 p.m. where the sun is like up there and you're melting, but maybe like in the evening, something like this could work. It's pretty. Like it feels like light and breathable, so I'm excited to try it on. I don't think I have a 100% silk garment, not even one that it's store-bought, so I don't know, I'm interested to try. That's it. Very simple shirt, v-neck. This first part of the v-neck is actually knitted flat, and then you join the piece of fabric in the round, and then you start forever and ever to knit in the round. I have my little stitch marker from Martina from We Grow Wild that keeps me company there, I love that. I recommend the yarn so far. Again, I've not worn it yet, so maybe wait <laughs> to hear my full review on this, but if you've been eyeing Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, I feel like so far I can testify that that's exactly as nice as I was imagining the yarn to be. Mm -hmm. The second work in progress that I have, it's called Leafinity Top. Um, this is a, another camisole, maybe it's called a top, so maybe I should say this is another top. And it's bottom up it looks very small but it's quite like stretchy here and open and this is knitted bottom up so this is actually the part that goes below my armpits something like this and i still need to knit kind of the triangles and the straps and everything that goes beyond this point here and the yarn I'm using, it's called Drops Muscat. This is 100% cotton, but it's an Aran weight, so it's very thick. Cotton is something you can definitely use in the summer, um, but the weight of the yarn is quite thick. So what's happening is that the fabric is both light and heavy. I, I don't know, it, it is confusing, so I'm interested to see how it will feel once I finished it and I try it on, but I do love the pattern. This is kind of a leaf pattern, and the actual leaf pattern itself is available for free on the designer's website. So if you are someone quite adventurous, and maybe you know the stitch count for your ideal garment, maybe you can stick in there the leaf pattern. Um, again, I'm not someone who's adventurous with their knitting or garment construction, um, so I just follow patterns, but um, yeah, this pattern if you're interested, maybe you want to do something very small, like a swatch, and see if you like it, it's available on the, on the designer website. And I'm making the Leafinity top. There's also another top that's called Leaf Top, which is actually knitted flat and not in the round and has buttons in the middle. But um, I do not care for knitting flat and I much prefer knitting in the round. I actually thought about adding a fake button band with some teeny tiny cute buttons um, in this version. And I've mentioned that in my last podcast, but it was already quite a complicated pattern for my mental energy. I tried that actually, 
and then I I had to frog it because the top was too big for me. I had made a size up to I compared to the one that I decided to go with in the end. And so since I was frogging anyway, I was like, okay, I will not insert the fake button then anymore so that I can relax a little bit better while knitting on this. It's already complicated enough with kind of the yarn overs and the knit to togethers and things like that. that we reverted back to a plain leafinity top in the round, completely reversible, no fake button bands in there. One thing that I found interesting slash confusing um, is that there's no recommended ease on the pattern. I also messaged the designer on Instagram saying, hey, what would you recommend in terms of ease? Like, should I knit this to have negative ease so that it stretches on my body or that no ease or positive ease so that it's more flowy? And they replied saying that it's completely up to me, which I really like being able to kind of make my choices. But in this case, I don't know, I, I was a little bit lazy and I really wanted just someone to tell me what to do. So I don't know, the first version that I made that I told you about that it it was too big and too loose. I made with a little bit of positive ease, but I feel like it didn't fit my body well. So this version that I'm making has a little bit of negative ease. So I'm excited to try it on and I feel like it will be perfect for me. So if you are interested in knitting a leafinity top or leaf top, I feel like I would recommend for now um, going for some negative ease. I don't know. Why am I giving advice on something that I haven't finished? I shouldn't do that. Don't listen to me. But look at this pretty pattern though. I'm excited to finish it up and see how it looks like in the end. But yeah, I think I mentioned it before, it was a little bit complicated. This is not something that I can knit on while watching my daughter or talking to other people. This is something that I knit on my sofa while looking at the chart and even like no audiobook, no podcast in the background, is that true? No, maybe I could do that, but sometimes I'm just so engrossed and focused on the yarn overs and everything that I, that's, that's what I need. I don't need like to keep my mind busy listening to an audiobook or watching a knitting podcast and so that's not a mindless knit. I feel like this is more of a mindful knit, if that's a term that people use. That's it. Thank you for listening to me. Last finished object that I have is unfortunately knitted in that yarn that I do not like from my local yarn store that's more appropriate for crocheting, but I'm using it for knitting, nah, it's okay. Um, this is the Torre Filati Cable 5. This is a type of yarn that I now understand being suitable for crochet, not recommended for knitting. It's very like a thread. And what I'm attempting here, instead of making another cumulus top, like this one, which I think would be a very viable option, but I'm trying to make a camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear, and this is just like the very beginning of a triangle. How do I show this to you? So this is the very, very beginning of kind of the triangle shape here. I really like the texture, and I think it looks pretty good in, in a yellow yarn. So I really want to try and see how it goes. However, I wasn't able to get gauge uh, in the sense that if I got gauge, the fabric with this specific yarn would be very holy. Because again, this is a yarn that's very, very thin and thread-like and doesn't bloom or anything like that. So my gauge is pretty tighter than what's recommended. So I'm gonna do one of those naughty things that knitters sometimes do, which is knitting a size up or just a larger size, but with a tighter gauge. 
So that's what I'm doing and I'm okay experimenting because this is again like an experimental yarn for me. So I'm okay kind of trying things out. So I made like different, this is my swatch and I made it with different needle sizes. It doesn't change much. Just this yarn just wants to be quite like tightly knit. So the camisole number four uh, requires you to need a couple of triangles, two triangles here for your chest. And um, I think a couple of very small triangles for the back and then you join in the round and you knit down. So very similar kind of style um, as the one that I'm wearing and probably as many other camisoles. I feel like it's a very easy, smart construction. So this is the first triangle. I think I'll knit a little bit more, another kind of a centimeter or so. And then I'll need the second one and try them on, maybe on the same cable to see if that could be like a right size for me. That's it. I love that. I love the texture and the color too. So hopefully it works out. So we're done in terms of actual knitted projects, but we have 200 million balls of yarn to show you. I want to say that if you want to go now, I understand you uh, because sometimes we don't need to listen to people kind of talking and showing yarn. So bye if that's you. Um, otherwise, we're going to continue going through yarny stuff. The yarn comes from two different shopping sessions. One, it was an online store that's called Las Tijeras Magicas. That's, I took Spanish in high school and I didn't really practice after high school. So I kind of, I think I, I remember some of the rules, pronunciation rules and words and stuff like that by missing the bulk of the language. So I really don't know. I tried to browse the website in Spanish to buy the yarn, but I had to quickly change it to English. I couldn't do it. So from that website, this is what I've gotten. I did get five balls of Filcolana Mercy. <sighs> Languages. Filcolana Mercy. Mercy. I don't know. That's a yarn. This is cotton merino. 50 50. So 50% merino, 50% cotton. So I think it would be lovely for spring and autumn, maybe chill summer nights, but. That's about it because the merino content and I'm planning to knit a cozy classic light sweater which is a very basic looking raglan with a quite an open gauge for a fingering yarn. Um, it won't be like super tightly knit like the camisole that I'm wearing, it'll be more of an open fabric so I think it'll be perfect and airy and I've never tried any Phil Colana yarns so this it will be my first time hopefully i like it because i already identified at least three other colorways of this yarn which i would truly love to knit with i also selected this mandarin petite by sunless garn actually it looks fairly similar to what i'm wearing right now the Yarn here is just cotton, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, this is 100% cotton. Actually, the colorway is hard to describe. I would say this is like a brown, and I plan to knit a Cecile top by Paula Strict, Suzanne Mueller, and it, it looks very good. It has like stripes, ribbing, maybe that's called ribbing. I think like it looks like stripes, and this is the exact yarn that's called for in the pattern, so I think it would have been a perfect match. And that's it. Three balls should be enough for a small size, which is what I'm usually going for. So, a yarn that I've not heard of before. This is an unpronounceable brand. I will put it on the screen. And the color is kind of like a chocolatey coffee caramel mixture all together. It is a light fingering yarn. 
I think it is very, very comparable in terms of meterage with the Knitting for Olive, either cotton merino or pure silk. I would be able to knit like a camisole or something similar with this with no problem. Not probably a full on shirt because um, three balls is a little bit too little for a full shirt with sleeves, but something like a tank top would work. So if you have recommendations for summer patterns, I'm always interested. I'm gravitating towards fitted knit, polo strict, and I don't have, I'm not very adventurous. So if you have like camisole patterns or tank tops that are for like fingering weight yarn, shoot them my way. Very soft. I am very surprised by the softness. I feel like for being 100% cotton, this feels very, very soft. So I'm excited to feel how the fabric resulting from this yarn will feel. I like the color too. I feel like I look good in browns. And the other thing that I bought from the website was the pure silk that you already saw. But this also comes from the Spanish website. The shipping was super fast, um, probably because Spain is very close to Italy. Uh, but yeah, this was a nice surprise. I had it in just a couple of days on my doorstep and it was like Christmas when I opened it up. I have some other bowls here and these actually come from my local market here in my city. Uh, in Italy you have, I think every town has their local market that gathers every week in the square of the town and you have like fruits and vegetables but also like garments, plants, chairs, furniture, like everything that you can think of might be there so they also have in my town in this market um, a stand that's all about knitting and crochet and fibers so let's call it like a crafty stand was recommended by a couple of knitting friends that I have in real life that are in my town and so I was fairly available that day of the week so I went in person and it was lovely. The person who was at the stand, I'm not sure if I should call it an owner, is that an owner of the stand? But like the person who was giving advice and making receipts um, was so, so lovely. I have a tank top shirt quantity of this basic cotton brand, this Mondial. This is 100% made in Italy and things like that. So I don't think how popular that would be outside of Italy but it is in a very soft shade of gray, which I really love. Softness is up there, even though this is 100% cotton, which sometimes feels a bit stiff. And I have four, no, I have five bowls of these. And so that's, I think would be perfect for any tank top. This is DK weight yard, so a tank top works out for me, my size. Last, yarn quantity or garment quantity is this beautiful green is this a eucalyptus green i don't know um, this is mondial basic luxe fine and this is indeed finer than the one i showed you before this is a light sport slash heavy fingering and i'm thinking this might become another cozy classic light because I think this is comparable to fingering, which is what the pattern calls for. It'll be just a little bit more of a denser fabric, just because this is not as thin as fingering, but I think it'll work out beautifully. Um, and I have nine bowls of this. So um, I think I might do like a sweater plus something else too, because I think I don't need nine of these bowls for a fingering sweater. Not sure, don't quote me on that. That's it. That was the basket of acquisitions. Now everything is on the floor and I'll have to gather it, but I don't mind touching yarn and looking at yarn. So I'll, I'll enjoy that activity later on. And this truly concludes my agenda for today in terms of yarny stuff. 
I hope you enjoyed this very rambly long episode and that you don't hate me for stealing your time. What else? I already mentioned the knitting retreat that I'm going to. That'll be so fun. I am so excited. I think having that little vacation on my calendar to look forward to was a lifesaver. Um, for my mental health, I find it very important to have stuff to look forward to, like this one. And so just see it there in my calendar while I kind of scroll through. And I was like, knitting retreat. I'm like, yes, I'm coming. I am so excited. I'm, I'm sure I'll be meeting lots of knitters and do lots of knitting time. I will learn stuff. I will walk and hike quite a lot. I will eat a lot of food, which I'm excited about. Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. I hope you were able to find some knitting events like this in your area uh, or if you are not lucky enough to be able to travel to these events or have like in real life knitting friends I hope you find some online knitting content that you enjoy maybe like this podcast because I feel like knitting alone is good but like Knitting with other people is also pretty good too. And I wish you can find some of these moments as well in your day, in your month. That's it, people. You're free to go now. Thank you for the company. And I'm going to see you next time for episode number 10. Such a like a round number. Um, that's pretty exciting. Bye-bye. Ciao.